All right, welcome back to another episode. My name is Desmond Soon, and I have founder of Spurl & Associates, Josh Spurl, Canada's top-rated CPA and North America's most sought-after CFO with us today here. And the topic we're gonna to be covering is about setting prices in your business. If you're like me or any other entrepreneur who's just getting started, I bet you one of the common myths that we always think about is we gotta start off low. We have to start off with our prices low so that we can build up that customer base and attract those customers. Josh, what's been your take on that? Welcome to the show again. You know, how do we set prices for our services? Well, I mean, there's an argument on, on doing work at reduced services in the beginning to gather social proof. That's the only purpose of doing it. So if you're, do, if, if you're doing work at a reduced rate, but you're not gathering social proof, Google reviews, video testimonials, there was no point of doing it. It's a, it's a tree falling in the middle of the woods and no one's going to hear it. Don't be the, the contractor who, you know, well, if you do this project for me, I got another 100,000 or 200,000. Like, that's, that's not what you're doing it for. That 100,000 or 200,000 never comes. You just did the project, you know, at a reduced rate with no social proof. So in reality, though, most business owners were going to think that they can't sell their product or service unless they're the cheapest, okay? okay. Um, this is not the true. Uh, I mean, you know, Harvard Business Review will, will state that if presented with three pricing options, the customer will choose the middle pricing option, you know, 70% of the time across. The middle bucket, so. They're gonna choose the middle bucket, right? And in, in the boot camps that we host, you know, you've seen me do this demonstration, yes. right? Where someone's always gonna say, I have to be the cheapest and I get every person to hold up their cell phone, right? Yes. And you see the room full of iPhones and Androids and nobody has the $50 burner phone from the gas station, no. even though it's the cheapest option out there, right? It's because it doesn't do what we wanted it to do, right? It doesn't have enough value that nobody bought it, right? Right. And most people are looking at their business as that, that they, they can only be the $50 burner phone, right? Um, you can't live in that area, right? If, it's a very hard truth to accept as a business owner, right. but if you can only get business because you're the cheapest, it means your product or service sucks, or at least the customer thinks it does, right? right? Uh, because really, they don't want to choose the cheapest option most of the time. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the, you know, as an entrepreneur, sometimes we have these self-limiting beliefs or it could be like an imposter syndrome. Yes. Hey Josh, I'm just getting started, yes. you know? Um, I. You know, I'm, I'm not a well-established business. I'm just getting started. Uh, I just want to attract the customers, so I'm going to go below market rate just to bring, just to get a couple of loyal customers, and I later can improve my, mm -hmm. increase my prices. Mm -hmm. Is that still doable, or am I hurting my cash flow from an accounting standpoint, from a CFO standpoint? It can be done, but yeah. it has to be done strategically with the goal of gathering social proof. Okay. okay. What does that mean? So you are gathering Google reviews or video testimonials. These are the two things that you're trying to gather. So in other words, what I'm hearing is I should let my customers know, hey, this is market fair market, market value. Yes. But I'm actually gonna be at a lower market value. You're, yes. You know, I'm gonna give it to a, a select group of individuals. Yes. Uh, because I'm just getting started. If you don't mind, please give me a testimonial. Please, would you be kind enough to give me a Google review? Yes. And you wanna be selective of what products and services you're willing to do that for because you don't want it be, you don't want to do it for something that's going to take weeks or months of your resources, right? Okay. It can be something that takes hours or a day of your resources. A quick right? turnaround. That's right. If you want to underprice something like that just to gather social proof, that's advisable. But if after you've gathered the social proof, you're still living at the bottom of your industry pricing, it's, it's because the market is telling you they don't want the service offering that you have. They don't want the product or service packaged the way you're packaging it, right? Yeah. Or you haven't done enough to promote the value add things that you do in your product or service. Yeah. And I think also, for those of you who may know me on YouTube as well, you may know that I'm also associated with a, a multi-millionaire mentor. His name is Dan Locke. And he also talks about high, he, he's, you know, he's the king of high ticket sales and high ticket priced items. And he always tells me, he's like, Desmond, you don't want the low ticket customers because you're gonna attract the wrong kind of customers. The, yes. the, the clients from hell, the, the cheap the cheapskates and stuff like that. Yes. Uh, Josh, speak about that. What, what is your take on that as well too? Why we should set higher prices and value our services even from the giddy up? So you're always, as a small business owner, you're always competing with bigger businesses, right? Bigger businesses have far more cash. They have far more capital to play the pricing game than you. You have to find a niche 
and you have to stack on value within your product or service offering to have a hope because really who wins, who's the lowest cost provider? It's the person with the deepest pockets. And as a small business owner, that's not you. It's just not going to be you, right? If you are trying to win with the lowest cost, um, it really it ends up being, you know, the cheapest materials, the worst employees, you know, shortcuts with your time on either, you know, manufacturing that product or delivering that service. So eventually it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy right. that your product or service does have to be cheap, it has to be priced the lowest because it's the cheapest and it's the worst product out there. Now Josh, what if I'm just getting started again, and I keep talking about the just getting started individuals, um, and I just need to get some cash flow. Yeah. Look, I'm, I'm just desperate to get my first sale. Yep. Um, and let's, let's just hypothetically talk about a product. Maybe you say I'm, I'm offering a service for $5,000. There's a lot of coaches, consultants, people that do that around that price range. $5,000, let's call it a six month consulting program yeah. uh, for $5,000 but I want to get my first few customers in the door. Am yeah. I allowed or should I drop that to 2,500? Nobody's, nobody's biting. Should I drop that to 2,000 just to get my first, just to get some cash flow going? The initial price when you're starting is actually irrelevant. This, okay. this is where, it, I, you know, I get a lot of people come into my office and they want to get very specific about their initial pricing. And the entire purpose of your, uh, of your initial product offering is not to generate profit because you're not going to make a lot of profit on it. It's just to gather social proof and actually to do market research, right? Got it. So you want to hesitate on giving away for free because it should, especially if you're trying to gather market resource because people tend to not value what they get for free. Yeah, right? you gotta have some skin in the game, right? Have some skin in the game, right? So the only justification for doing something for free is to gather social proof, okay? Um, but you know, ideally you can get a low price and now you're getting some actual market research from paying customers yes. and gathering some social proof. That's what you want to do. But people over spiritualize that really initial product offering and that really initial uh, service price um, because they don't realize is that no one's going to pay a very good amount of money for your product or service initially until you have some social proof. Understood. So as we wrap up this video, what would you give as maybe one or two action steps for someone just getting started or someone who's trying to figure out their pricing? Where is the place that they can research to know if their pricing is a good fit for the market? Find out where your competitors are. So find out where your competitors and what the range is, right? And then what you want to do is you want to find ways to stack a value on your product or service, right? So if they buy this, they also get that, right? Right. For a guaranteed fixed price. People will always pay more for a price guarantee, a fixed price, because they're always worried about the unknown. If I have to pay it, you know, how much extra am I going to have to pay? They would rather pay extra from the get-go knowing that that's it. I don't have to pay anything else. Right. You know, the thing that I'm buying actually does what I need to do. You know, that's what people are willing to pay a premium for. And Josh as well too, just one last question. Uh, I was trained to, you know, when, when considering prices, um, to look at what value my service or product delivers. So for example, I do a lot of service work and if I'm helping clients and hypothetically, let's say they go through my six month program and I, I help them out, they are able to hypothetically produce an additional 100,000 in value. Yeah, you know, it's not guaranteed, but approximately that's that's the goal we're, we're gonna my advice my consulting to them is gonna help produce an extra hundred thousand of top line revenue how do I use that as a gauge to figure out what price I should charge um, is there a percentage you know maybe I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring a hundred thousand maybe should I charge ten percent of that you have to be careful on trying to extract the maximum amount of value on a transaction you also want to really consider you know what is the lifetime value of the customer Correct. because a customer will pay an accelerated rate you know, first, maybe in the first month of the relationship, first year of the relationship, people dramatically underestimate how much that customer is worth if you can do business with them for 10 years, right? Correct. And so... So don't bleed the customer. Don't, the, yeah. don't bleed the customer, especially on uh, services. You really want to understand um, how much it costs for one laborer or minimum wage type employee in that type of service, right? Yes. Um, because they're always, the customer is always cross shopping you against that, right? And so what you want to do is ideally deliver something of higher value that they know I can't even do this internally for, right? Especially when we're talking about a service. 
Fantastic. Wow, if you found that helpful information, do comment below, send us your questions. I will get Josh to answer those specific questions that you post, and we'll also create future videos based on your questions. Go ahead and check out the playlist over here, click the I button, and see some of the other videos that we've done in the past. We'll see you in the next video.